This video is number seven. It's about getting fixed and random summaries with R and D in uh, preferred input. So just to remind you, um, Metaphor uses inverse variance weights to combine the effect sizes and um, you can specify fixed or random and if you want random you've got choices of a lot of different estimators for the random effects variance component and you choose fixed random and which kind by the method statement. If you use preferred format, which is the topic of this video, then you can also use the measure command to tell Metaphor what kind of transformations you want. Let's talk about correlations. So uh, the preferred input format for correlations is uh, R and N. If you, if you input R and N, then you can tell Metaphor what kind of transformation to use. You can use core, which is the Pearson correlation. You can use U-core, which is a transformation that uh, um, eliminates the bias in the correlation. Or you can uh, choose Z-core, which gives you the Fisher's uh, R to Z transformation. Um, if you use core, the default is large sample uh, approximation for the variance that it will compute from the value of R and N. And you can, uh, if you want, uh, put in UB for an unbiased estimate of the sampling variance. And the same is true for U core. It isn't going to make a whole lot of difference which of these you use, but it's your call. And of course, Z core uh, isn't going to matter a whole lot for some things, but it will for others. Depends on what you're doing, but these are your choices. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, a uh, data set now on um, leader member exchange is independent variable, and I'm going to show you one piece of this, which is um, affective commitment to the organization. So the study is about uh, leader behavior and follower um, feelings of commitment to the organization. Uh, and I'm going to analyze it a couple ways for you. Uh, one is the measure is core and the method is HS. So we're going to use correlations, uh, the raw correlations, and we're going to use the Hunter and Schmidt method to estimate the random effects variance. And you should know that if you do this, this does not give you the same thing as what Hunter and Schmidt would give you if you followed their uh, algorithm in, the, in their book. Uh, this, this is still an inverse variance method. It just uses the Hunter and Schmidt uh, estimate of the random effects variance. Um, the other way I'm going to show it to you is Z-Core with uh, Dersimonian and Laird. So uh, the results of this will be in Z, not in R. So if you want to know what the results would be in R, then you have to back translate because um, the program, as far as I know, doesn't do that for you. All right, so here's the Rookstall data, and um, you can see that it's got authors, year, number of people, the country, da, 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 da. it's got some of these moderators, and there's the correlation coefficient R. We got alpha, we've got uh, alpha for LMX, we got variance, we've got these are Z and V that I computed. Okay, so now uh, the result for rocks gets, this is metaphor, and notice I've got n sub i equals n, r sub i equals r, so this tells it what the sample size and the correlations are. The method for uh, estimating the RVC is Hunter and Schmidt, and the measure is the, the raw correlation coefficient, and we need to tell it what data set. All right? It runs and comes back like this, uh, 92 studies. Um, Tau squared estimators, Hunter and Schmidt. The tau is 10. The I square is 81. And the overall correlation between leader behavior and, and member commitment is 0.43. 41 to 46 are the confidence interval limits. Okay, so um, in the second analysis, I've got uh, n sub i equals n again, r sub i equals r again. Method is DL, so it's a different method of extracting the REVC, and measure is Z-core, so this is going to apply the uh, R to Z transformation, same data set. And here we've got the same 92 studies and a uh, different uh, estimator for REVC, and here we've got a tau of 12 and the um, I square of 78. It's not surprising that tau is a little bit bigger here than it is here because 
uh, we're in Z, and that spreads out the, the right side, the high end of the tail quite a bit. Um, okay, and so uh, we've got uh, the results are 46 for the overall estimate, and the confidence interval is 44 to 49. And um, actually, if you, if you do the back translation, that's pretty close to these values. Okay, so that's so the thing I wanted you to see is that by inputting these R and N, you don't actually have to compute Z. Um, the whole analysis is done for you if you just tell Metaphor I want Z core. Uh, let's see. And lastly, um, mean differences. So preferred method is mean standard deviation and sample size for each group, and then you can um, choose your measure. And the the choices are the mean difference for M, that's MD no standardizing for a pooled standard deviation, and SMD, which is the standardized mean difference, which is the, the typical thing that you do. Mean difference uh, usually can't reasonably do because you don't have exactly the same um, measures in all of your studies. So standardized mean difference is the typical choice because you might be looking at the difference between men and women on depression, but they'd be having different scales in different studies. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at the appetite study now. I made these data up, and let's pretend that um, we've got some dough that people are eating, and some people watch an advertisement before, and some people watch a, uh, a neutral video of the same length. And um, I'm going to run um, the mean difference with uh, DL, and then I'm going to run a standardized mean difference with DL, and then I'm going to run a Standardized mean difference with <clears throat> restricted maximum likelihood. Appetite debt. So here's the study. Here's the year. Here's the um, the people with the advertised mean, mean, their standard deviation, their number. Here's the uh, people with control standard deviation, the number of them, and is a moderator. Okay. So the resid the results for appetite study are. Let's run metaphor. And here's my. Uh, mean 1 sub i comes from the mean experimental. SD1 sub i comes from standard deviation experimental. N1 sub i comes from number and experimental. M2 sub i comes from the mean of controls. M SD2 sub i is SD control. And N2 sub i comes from the number of controls. Method equals um, DL, Dersimony and Laird. Measure equals mean difference. Data is appetite debt. All right, so it's run uh, five studies, tau squared estimator, and it's got a value of tau of 65. It's got an I square of, I'm sorry, it was 69. I square of um, 63 and change. The estimate is about two and a half. Uh, they're eating dough and grams. That's about two and a half grams difference in favor of the uh, commercial. Okay, so then, uh, and this goes from 1.79 to about 3.31. Now we do the same thing. We've got the same input. So you've got the mean standard deviation n for both experimental and control. And now we're going to standardize mean difference. Same uh, number of studies, same data, same estimator. But now uh, we're going to use the standardized mean difference. And notice, um, Standardized mean difference is a good deal smaller, and um, the really interesting thing is that the tau is now much smaller, and look at the difference in I square. So that's really kind of interesting. Um, all right, so that's the mean difference and the standardized mean difference, and then I want to run one more. So this is also the standardized mean difference, but this time instead of the uh, Tersimony and Laird, I'm running restricted maximum likelihood. So these two things are the same, except for the, uh, the estimator for um, the random effects variance component. And you see uh, I got 1.32 here, and I got 1.32 here, and I got 1.03 and 1.6 and 1.6. And so um, you can see that they're pretty similar. Uh, in this case, tau uh, for Dersimonian and Laird was 097. Here it's 079 or 08. So um, in this case, the uh, estimator for tau 
the estimated tau was a little bit less in the uh, appetite case, but it was more in the um, first data set that I ran, the McNatt data set. So you're going to get a little different results depending on which estimator you choose, and that is your choice. Okay, that wraps it up for this module.